Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be looking in a bit of detail about the idea of water potential. So first of all we need to make sure we understand what water potential means. Um, this is the sign for water potential, so this letter here is a Greek letter um, and we pronounce it psi. And water potential is a way of showing how likely it is, so the tendency of water to leave one place and move to another place. So if we have a situation like this, so we've got some sort of a container and this dotted line represents a semi-permeable membrane, just like the uh, semi-permeable membrane that you get around cells. So this is a bit like the cell surface membrane. And if you have on one side, we have a solution here with lots and lots of water molecules and maybe just a couple of solute molecules. And on the other side, we've got a, a, a solution with far more solute molecules. So this is what we would say is a more concentrated solution, and on the left here, a more dilute solution. If we left this container for a period of time, then after a while, we would expect to see this. The solution on the left-hand side would have gone down. There'd be less of it. And on the right-hand side, it would have gone up. And the reason for that is that the water that was over here on the left has moved across to the right, so we end up now with more solution on the right. So that happens because in this original situation here, the water potential on this left-hand side was higher and the water potential on the right-hand side was lower. So if we said that water potential is the tendency of water to leave, a higher water potential means a higher tendency to leave, a higher likelihood of leaving. So the water here is more likely to leave compared to the water here. So even though molecules don't know which way to go, overall we end up with more molecules going from this side into here, so we end up with more of the solution on this side. Another way that you can think about water potential rather than just the tendency um, of water to move, you can think of it in terms of the energy that's available um, in that particular uh, system. So it's like saying this side has got a higher water potential, therefore more energy, and therefore because there's more energy, the water moves across to where there is less energy. Two different ways of thinking about it, um, but they both end up with the same thing happening. Okay, so as we saw in that previous example, um, the presence of solutes decreased the water potential, so we want to look at why that is. So if we look here at um, a solution, um, and actually this is not a solution, this is just pure water, it's distilled water because there are no solutes in there at all. When you have pure distilled water, that's the highest water potential you can have because uh, you can't have a situation where water has got more energy and is more likely to leave than when you've only got water. So this here has a water potential of zero. If you add a solute molecule, then what you see happening is because of the nature of water molecules, uh, which, have, uh, which are polar, so they have a positive and a negative dipole, they orientate themselves around solute molecules. Now, I'm not going to show the, the dipoles here. You can't see the hydrogen and oxygen. But to simplify it, what happens is that those water molecules end up um, binding by hydrogen bonds to the solute molecule. So these water molecules would have um, a, a force of attraction, hydrogen bonds, between them and the solute molecule. And then we've still got some other water molecules which are not bound. So if we know that water potential is about the tendency of water to move, if you've got water which is attracted to a solute molecule, it is less able to move because it's being attracted to the solute. So when we've added our solute here, we've made it harder for the water to leave. And therefore, the tendency, the likelihood of the water being able to leave 
from this solution is lower than it is from this one. So the water potential here is lower, the water potential here is higher. So here, pure water, the water potential is zero. The water potential here is lower, lower than zero, that means it becomes negative. So we decrease the water potential with our solutes and the water potential becomes more negative. Okay, so we've mentioned water potential, we understand that now, but what about something called solute potential? If we compare a few different situations, so first of all, we've got distilled water. If we then add some solute to that, and then we add even more solutes, if we were to make a comparison moving from this situation to this and then to this, as we go down in that direction, we can see that firstly we are increasing the amount of solute, okay, so from no solutes to a bit more to a bit more. So that means that we are increasing the concentration of our solutions. And as we have just seen, we know that that means that as we go from this to this to this, the tendency for water to leave is decreasing. So we can say, instead of the tendency, the potential for water to leave decreases. So this is just sort of summarising what we've already said. So we know that as we go down this way, the water potential is going to go from zero and it's going to decrease, so it's going to become more negative. What we need to understand is this here, which represents solute potential. So it's the same sign that we use for water potential, but with an, uh, an S there as a subscript. So this represents the solute potential. Now, water potential is actually affected by several different things. One of them, as we've seen, is the amount of solute that you have in the solution. So when we talk about solute potential, we just mean the contribution of solutes to the water potential. So in other words, all you need to understand is that when we add solute, as you can see here, by adding solute, the water potential decreases. So the water potential has decreased because you have added solute. So the solutes have caused the water potential to decrease and therefore that contribution is the solute potential. So the solute potential also decreases because it's the, the, the amount of water potential that is due to the solutes, if you like. In animal cells, water potential and solute potential will be the same value because in animal cells there isn't really anything else that affects the water potential apart from how much solute there is um, in the cell. So water potential and solute potential are basically in animal cells the same thing and it's telling you the tendency of water to move, to leave um, a particular area and solutes will decrease the solute potential and therefore they will decrease the water potential. Okay, now I said that there are other things that can also affect water potential and pressure is one of them. But we only really see this in plant cells because um, of the influence of the cell wall. So if we go back, this is the, the same diagram that we saw right at the very beginning. Um, so we've got our two solutions separated by a semi-permeable membrane here. Now, we know that what we would normally expect to happen if we left this for a period of time is we'd expect to see the solutions um, reach an equilibrium in this situation here. But what if you added pressure what if you pushed down, if you were able to sort of try and compress the solution on this side? Remember that what we just saw is that water overall moves from here to here. But if you push down on this side, by pushing it, you're adding force. And that force makes it more likely that water is going to go in that direction. So by adding pressure you're increasing the likelihood that the water here is going to leave. So adding pressure 
increases the water potential on this solution. So what that means is if you increase the pressure potential, you are increasing the water potential. You're making it more likely the water will leave and go that way. What we can say, therefore, is that the total water potential, and this is in plant cells, is a combination of the solute potential, so how much solute you add, and the pressure potential. If you combine those two things, you end up with the total water potential. And in this situation here, what you could see is that because of the increased water potential on this side, which is a result of the pressure, instead of the situation where you end up with um, movement of water from left to right, you could end up with the situation where it just stays like this. You don't see any change because the water potential on both sides is equal. When there was no pressure here, the water potentials were unequal and water moved from left to right. But now we have the pressure that has uh, equilibrated the water potential on both sides and now this situation will stay here at equilibrium. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.